Hey, Ben, how you doing, man? It's JP. JP, what's up? In your, what's on your mind, man? Man, look, I, I, I want to tell you, I believe you're spot on. This is straight out of President Obama's playbook. And to be totally honest, and not to make Tim Kaine look bad, but he said the exact same thing that President Obama said when he was at the G20. He mm -hmm. talked about his whole idea of Kaepernick's ability to talk about it, that it's a major issue, but he never dies into the point that there really needs to be some substantive conversation on police reform. Yeah. There's never any substantive conversation on what happens even when these folks are taken to court in the few times that they are. Mm -hmm. So in reality, this is their playbook. They placate the African-American vote. They say enough not to be caught. But if you really force them, and if we really had investigative journalists, like I heard you talk about on yesterday, that people would die past the fluff and force them into a real conversation right. on what are you going to do right. about these issues? Are you willing to use the bully pulpit, which is the dollar, to stop this police brutality? Are you willing to begin to count the actual number of lives that are being taken that these police departments won't even allow to happen? Yeah. And, and so what happens is is that you, you hit the nail on the head, and I'm just going to reiterate it so the viewers will know. <laughs> At the end of the day, what we end up doing is because we don't want to damage a candidate, we yep. don't speak against a candidate. And yep. to me, if you're a black person and you do that, I call that straight cooner. The actual idea is I have never heard one gay person say that gay marriage was not important. Mm -hmm. It was an important platform. They were not going to be silenced right. or subjugated. They kept it in front of people until now. If you're against it, you something is somehow something is wrong with you. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if these are the issues of importance and they want our vote or they take for granted, which which actually is one of the few truths that Trump has said, the Democrats take African-American vote for granted. We going to give it to him. So we so the idea that he's saying is true. Now yep. I don't believe nothing that he has to say yep. because he hasn't he hasn't given us anything. But by the point is, no one even in that conversation do they ever talk about the fact that Trump is absolutely right oh, no. in his assertion that black people don't get nothing for their vote. No, nah, not at all. They didn't touch it. Not at all. Not Bakari, not Van, not not any one of them. The only person that I saw who was willing to touch it was Mark Lamont Hill, and he did a good job yeah. of basically saying we have to deal with the substantive issues. Yeah. So at the end of the day, here's what I would say, if, and, and I'm going to go back to what you said, and I love the way you said it. If we don't force their hand while they're a candidate, we might as well wait because they they're not going to pay attention to our voice once they get in the office, and it'll be another four years before we can get any interaction or conversation, which, again, was probably the second truth that Trump has told this whole election cycle. But look, Ben, do your thing. Great show, great Thanks, point, man. on point, and it's good to be back on the on the BPB show, man. It, it's been too long. <laughs> it's been a while, man. Great to hear your voice again. Uh and thanks for the call. I, and I agree. Um, there's, I have no reason whatsoever to believe anything that Trump says. Um, I, I, and, and actually, I might as well. How much time do I have? I'll go off on a couple of tangents here. Um, so this continuous line that we get from Republicans. Right. So it, I don't even know where to start. Actually, I do. Let me start here. Like. Just because I'm calling the Democrats on their bull. Don't think for one second that that means there's any support here for Republicans. I'm saying both of them are crap for black people and progressives, black progressives and, and non-black progressives. It's it's both parties right now are a complete shit show for black people and progressives. Both parties are going to be quite OK for people who make and they bring in their household over one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year, you're going to be OK with either party because it's just like, you know, not much is going to change for you. Right. Um, except for the, the, the tax bracket a little bit underneath uh, Hillary Clinton, you'll probably pay a little bit more than you would underneath Trump. But, you know, but structurally, structurally, nothing is really going to change for you. Um, but for black people, 
you know, there is this line that comes from Republicans all the time about how much damage has been done to black communities by virtue of the Democratic Party. And they point to Detroit and say Detroit has been under the control of Democrats for the last 50 years. Yeah, but what did they do in those 50 years? They did the exact same thing, just a softer version of what Republicans would have done. Right. The the, the deindustrialization of Detroit would have happened underneath a Republican, probably just at a faster rate. So when they point to a city that has been gutted economically because of all the outsourcing, because the industries have just completely left and gone overseas, they're no longer in America. And they point to it and say, look at Democratic policies. The, we are they need people to be obtuse enough to not know that the same exact policies would have ensued from a Republican administration. Case in point, it is not like the jobs left Detroit and went to Kansas City, Kansas. It is not like it went to some red state, some red city. It, it's not like they went to the Republican states. Those jobs left America and they left America because the Democrats and Republicans agreed on one thing. They didn't they would never agree on abortion. They would never agree on gay marriage. They would never agree on anything else. But they agree on one thing, that globalization, neoliberal economic policies are the way of the future. And we want to bring it to America. And that's what they did. So when they say Trump says, oh, look at the black community. What the hell do you have to lose? Well, actually, the same exact thing we would lose if we went with the Democrats. Because economically, the Republican Party has nothing more for us than the Democratic Party has for us. Period. 